Welcome to the CDP Educational Center in Second Life. I'm Kelly Crestman, and I'm going to show you around the orientation station. The orientation station is at the landing point of the SEM when you first arrive. And if you're a newcomer to Second Life, this can really help you get started quickly. So follow me down to the subway, and I'll show you around. Here's a quick tip. If you'd like to teleport down to the subway instead of walking down the stairs, zoom out with your mouse, hover over the sign above the subway station, and click. You'll land in the subway station. Here's another tip. You'll notice that on the opposite side of the subway cars, there are some exit doors marked. If you need to leave the orientation station before you make it to the end, feel free to click one of those exit signs and you'll teleport to the SIM surface. Easy as that. When you first arrive in the subway car, you'll see some placards to your left and to your right. The white signs tell you about some activities that you need to be able to do in Second Life, and the black signs will tell you how to work your way through the orientation station so that you can learn how to do those activities easily. I'll show you how to do each activity, and then you can try them yourself. Okay, the first task we're going to be working on is walking using the arrow keys on your keyboard. To perform this task, you just need to walk over the red dots, which will automatically turn them green. You don't need to hit them in the very center. You just need to get close to them with your feet using the arrow keys. And when you hit the last one, the door will open magically and you'll be able to go to the next car. Now, in this car, you're going to be using a sit icon in order to sit on one of the benches. Notice when I hover over the blue seats, I get a little chair icon. This is called a sit target. When I hover over the orange ones, there's no sit target. It's just a regular cursor. This means that the blue seats are scripted to make me sit down when I click on them. So watch what happens. There I go, I'm sitting. Now, when I want to stand back up, and this is true anytime you sit on anything in Second Life, a stand button will appear at the bottom of the screen. All you need to do is click on that stand button and your avatar will stand. Okay, to the next task. In this car, you're going to be getting familiar with what a dialog box looks like. And basically, all you need to do in this car is walk close to that door down at the end. When you get close, a dialog box will pop up. Now, my dialog box is blue. Yours may be blue or black. But all you need to do is read the information on the dialog box and follow the instructions. If for some reason you stand here for a while and the dialog box disappears, you'll still be able to see this little cube up here in the corner. And that indicates that there's a dialog box that hasn't been responded to. So you just need to click on the cube. Watch what happens when I click on the cube. It makes the dialog box disappear and it comes back. Now, if I wanted to go away entirely, I could click ignore. But in this case, since I want to work my way through these lessons, I need to click OK. When I click OK, the door will open. Now, the next lesson is chatting in nearby chat. Remember, when you chat in nearby chat, everyone who's near you in the sim can see what you're saying. So this is a good way to talk to a group. The person at the end of the car is a passenger. And so the instructions I have are to just chat with her and then see what happens. So let's go. Hi, passenger. She says, well, hi, passenger to you. Did you know that this island is named CDP Prime? Now notice another dialog box has popped up in the corner. All I need to do is answer the question using the information that the passenger gave me. And that will open the door. Okay. Next lesson is just a little bit more complicated, clicking on things in Second Life. So in this case, I'm asked, in order to unlock the next door, I just need to punch in the lost key card passcode into the keypad. Now, the key card is lying on the orange bench down at the end. So let's go closer. And you'll notice that this hover text is giving me the passcode. All I need to do is look at the hover text, 
press the keypad here with the correct passcode and the door opens. Okay, this car is going to help you get familiar with teleportation. So basically, the door at the end of this car is broken. So in order to get to the other side, I'm going to need to teleport. Since the door is broken, it's going to send me a teleport to let me go to the other side. But I need to click the door in order to get the teleport. Click. Now, in this case, it's going to show up in nearby chat. And I can see in chat the location of the door here is underlined, which means I need to click on it. And I teleport to the other side of the door. Now, sometimes teleports will show up in a dialog box instead, but either way, you just need to click on the indicated teleport and you'll go where the teleport wants to send you. The final car is voice chatting. So this is just a chance for you to make sure that your voice chat is working. You'll need to enable voice chat by clicking on the speak button in the bottom of your screen if you haven't done that already. And you'll know it's working because you'll see a little white dot above your head and you'll see green sound waves coming from the dot whenever you speak. So since mine is already enabled, you can see that my speech waves, my sound waves are coming out of my dot as I talk. And this means that my voice button is enabled and it's working correctly. You'll get a final dialog box that asks if you're broadcasting your green waves. And if you are, you can say yes. And you're done. That's all there is to it. Work your way through the orientation station as many times as you like and have fun in Second Life.